So let's start with the new animation system. Whatever your team size, Unity's new animation system will easily take on the most outrageous animation challenges for many years to come. It's designed for gameplay programmers and technical animators to build flexible and scalable pipelines. Let's have a look at some highlights. We'll start with a really big change. You'll see that everywhere in the new system, in just one click, you can preview everything without having to load it into the scene first. Pretty important. This is going to reduce a lot of frustration and human error as it only will show you the compatible clips with the character you have selected. Our new skeleton workflow allows you to go beyond what's in your imported rig. You'll simply be able to add, edit, and reset your required or default pose, uh, or if you prefer, simply disable bones that you don't need. Um, and all of the changes that we have there, they're stored locally. So making any updates from the art package is way less fragile and far less painful than before. There's a new socket object as well, which is used as a kind of a virtual transform. And this means that it no longer has to be a fragile bone that you create inside your art package, which could get nudged and so on. So here you can see that we're previewing attachments along with their animations. The great thing is that you can edit, preview, edit and preview the socket, and then you can make sure that the position and the orientation of everything is exactly correct for all the animations are going to apply to it. And this is going to reduce error for, obviously, things like weapon placement that we're showing here. There'll no longer be a commitment up front when importing, as you'll be able to preview everything, edit your clip, and add custom properties. You'll be able to create and edit animation events, and even use multiple tracks, and use range markup as well. The all-new remapping system means that anything is possible. So, here are two characters that are going to use the same animation. So you're going to be able to remap anything to anything, uh, independent of naming, the hierarchy, uh, or in, of course, in this example, the proportions. And it will work offline and at runtime. So you can see as we apply here, that animation is just working for both characters. Graphs are at the center of everything in the new system. They're designed to give technical animators more creative freedom for their gameplay implement implementation without having to code. Graphs are approachable, uh, yet extensible, and we re reduce the bottleneck on programming. They are built on a new graph stack, just like Shader Graph 2, and can be packaged and reused. You could use runtime rigging for any character type, uh, or indeed create your own nodes with your own special source. The all-new state machine is truly hierarchical, designed to scale even if you have thousands of animation sources. It's highly optimized, much easier to read, refactor, and reused with layers, uh, blend spaces, subgraphs, integrated rig graphs, um, excuse me, as well as constraints and math operations as well. You'll be able to easily swap animation while keeping your orchestration logic intact. So it not only offers, offers you a serious level of control over your animation, but incredible performance at scale as well. I love this next feature. So we're working on live visual graph debugging uh, with in-game recording and gameplay. So this makes it easy to navigate to the source of any particular animation problem that you've got, no matter how complex the setup. You can simply record and then rewind the game data frame by frame and see what's going on in the graph at any particular moment. Not only does this make, mean that you're going to ship fewer in-game animation bugs, but it means you can afford to make some changes later in production because we're effectively de-risking. The new animation system is, of course, built with performance in mind. It's built on ECS and, of course, therefore works with game objects too. It's written in C Sharp and high performance C Sharp. And all animation code is running burst compatible, meaning you have performance uh, kind of native execution. You'll have control over the execution order, customizable phases, and all callbacks will be deferred. You'll also, we've also removed some of the former limitations, like, for example, the sync point bottleneck, um, the overhead when rebinding animations at runtime. And what you're seeing here is a demo of 1,000 nights running on this new system, all at a steady 30 FPS inside the editor. Really, this is just the beginning. So, Andrew, what hero character would be complete without a world to explore? Let's talk about world building. Unity's new world-building system is powered by entities and built with the future of game development in mind. These new tools are designed primarily for technical artists choosing this Unity to build bigger, more ambitious games. Our goal is to offer much more flexibility during iteration, later in production, and the foundational tech is there to unlock unprecedented performance at scale across all of Unity's supported platforms. Let's have a look at some highlights. Once in the editor, you can establish masks and procedural rule sets 
based on altitude, curvature, and slope. And that offers non-destructive editing, super important, and adaptation during your edits. Ultimately, we want to give you more flexibility throughout production when you find changes that you want to make. Really cool. And here you can see how we grab this piece of an island, duplicate it, drag it across, and it's all of those procedural rule sets just kick in and make it work perfectly. Here you can see how we integrate shader graph into the terrain surface and enable blending of meshes far more seamlessly. So this is one of those kind of long-standing feature crests, and um, I think it looks pretty nice. And here we have an example of how you can integrate hero assets in and have all of your rules, materials, scattered assets, and masks respond to your placement. So this basically means you can spend more time finding the perfect layout of the level without having to worry and rework everything if you change your mind. Absolutely love this thing. It's great. Um, so for performance as well, there's virtual texturing and tessellation, and they provide more detail in the world close to, to the player where they can see it the most, and it automatically reduces complexity away from the camera to optimize performance.